Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of NRE Secrets, I'm going to show you how to treat your dog or cat's abscess at home. So how do you know if your dog or cat has a bite wound or an infection? So for instance here, and I'm going to be demonstrating on Lewis and throughout this video, you know, if he'd been running or playing perhaps in the lake and he's jumped on top of a stick, I mean, he could have a, just a puncture underneath his skin here. And similar to infections in our cells, I mean, the, the signs we're going to see, we're going to see it's going to be red, swollen, typically painful. If it's from a bite wound, you're going to see puncture marks. In some cases, you're not seeing anything at all. You're just seeing a cat who's coming in limping or a dog who's limping. Um, it may otherwise be just that your dog or your cat isn't feeling quite right. So you're going to palpate them and feel an area that's sore, that, which you're then going to go and investigate. But in all cases, I mean, something has been punctured through the skin or introduced into the skin, where it's teeth mark, where it's a, a, skin, a stick or something that has caused that infection and caused the redness and the swelling. So if your dog or cat is extremely lethargic, they're unwilling to eat, they're unwilling to drink, and that warrants immediate veterinary visit in terms of not going through with some of these holistic home remedies. But if you've got a dog or cat who's still relatively alert and you've examined them, you've seen this puncture wound, you've seen what looks like an infection or an abscess, then I want you to go through the rest of the video and use some of these home remedies. So what do you do first? Well, the first thing is you need to be examining this wound and make a decision in terms of what is it, what's caused it, what is the best appropriate action in terms of treating it. Many pets are very sore initially, and they just won't let you have let you properly examine it or clip it or clean it or treat it in any way. So you need to give them something in the form of pain relief that's going to be mildly sedating. Um, there's a couple of different things I want to suggest. So if we're dealing with our dogs and our dog owners and our cats, the one thing that's universally safe for dogs and cats is rescue remedy. So here's the rescue remedy here. And typically I'm giving two or three drops you know, per 10 pounds. And I like to give it just on their tongue. So if you've got a, if you're if we're dealing with a cat, you know, I would just get, have you give two drops in the mouth. If we're dealing with something a bigger dog like Lewis, I do upwards of 10. And I'll just give it right under on the edge of his lips. And I'll give it about 10 minutes to have an effect. And for a majority of the pets, I find, so long as you wait long enough, there is a bit of sedative calming effect. And then you're better able to next examine that wound. The one other suggestion I want to give for the dog owners is the use of aspirin. Here's the 325 milligram regular strength ASA. Never give to cats. And if you've got a dog that's going to underline liver or kidney disease, you, you want to avoid it. Uh, but for the majority of our dogs, it's fairly safe as far as it, and over-the-counter anti-inflammatory to give. So we're looking at a dose of one 325 milligram tablet for 40 or 50 pounds of body weight. So for something like, like Lewis, I will be giving him two of these tablets because he's upwards of 90 pounds. Likewise too, so I would just put them in his mouth orally. Drop them in the back of his throat, like this here. Follow up with my two fingers right at the base of his tongue to ensure that he swallows them. And then once again, I would wait 30 minutes at least before you're going to actually start working on that wound. You want to give everything time to work so he has some pain relief and he's slightly sedated. It's a lot easier to then go through the next steps. The next step in terms of treating a bite wound or abscess is clipping and cleaning it. And I'll give you a couple different options in terms of doing that. One, all of you should have blunt scissors. So that's what I want to use here first to show you how easy it is. And you're all, all you're going to have this in your house, have it on hand. So let's imagine that Lewis's bite wound is here, right here in his groin. What I'm using is these blunt scissors. I'm, not, I'm make, being careful that I'm not pulling the skin up. I'm going to cut the hair all around in a circle. You need to get as much hair off as possible. Because what can happen, and what I've seen many times with clients' animals, is that the hair isn't removed properly, it mats up, and then it covers those puncture wounds, 
it covers that abscess, preventing it from draining. The single biggest thing in terms of treating these bite wounds, these abscesses, is having them open, open and draining so then the infection can come out. And the only way it can come out properly is if you've removed all the hair, as much hair as possible. So just being gentle, going all around that wound, just clipping all the hair, as much hair as possible. Because we're trying to make, we want to know that that abscess can drain out properly, and that hair is not going to stop it. So that here I am doing it with just blunt scissors, which you're all going to have on hand. And for those of you who do more animal care at home, I encourage you to get a pair of clippers, and, yet, and then it, that's something that makes it even easier. They're very inexpensive. You can go pick a pair up at Walmart for 40 bucks. There are those. Regardless whether you're using clippers, whether you're using blunt scissors, so you've clipped as much hair as possible, so you've really opened up the skin, and now you can easily see where that infection, that bite wound is present. The next step is cleaning and flushing. So in terms of cleaning and flushing the wound, I'm going to give you a couple of different options. One, you can use something such as this, which is hexidine flush. It's chlorhexidine is the antiseptic. It's a wonderful, wonderful antiseptic flush. This is the one that we use for the scrub, for surgical scrub. So it's effective against most of the skin bacteria, and the bacteria that are going to be, have been introduced from a bite wound. So I encourage you to pick, a, pick up some hexidine flush. So you can get that available at all pharmacies. Another option, if you don't happen to be able even to get to the pharmacy, and it works also quite well, is just concentrated black tea. So then what I want you to do, is one if we're using the flush, is I've got a bowl here to catch some of the fluid. So I'm going to spread the skin open slightly where the puncture is. I've got myself also a gauze. These are little 2x2 two two gauzes. You can use, use a dish cloth, um, a clean cloth, uh, if that's all you have. And then I'm going to use this flush in a, in a flush syringe bottle, so it's easy for me to flush it into the wound. So I'm always going to spread the skin, of, skin apart, you know, and then I'm going to put the tip of this right at the edge of that wound, and then flush fairly hard. You actually want to get this hexidine, or the tea itself, you want to get it right into that wound because we want to open up that wound, we want to flush as much bacteria out. And that's how we're healing that abscess, is we're opening up, we're flushing the bacteria out from inside the skin. So in terms of the frequency, you want to be flushing that wound twice a day, either with the syringe that I just showed you. Some animals, it's very, very painful initially, they're not going to let you flush that, that tissue that well. So then you can start out by just using a hot, hot, a hot compress on that skin, just enough to clean it, <coughs> loosen it up, and as the infection starts to resolve, then hopefully they're going to let you actually get in there and actually flushing it out, flushing it with a syringe. And then another option I would have many clients doing this hydrotherapy with is where they would actually just put their, their pets in the bathtub and use something, one of these little shower massages. The big point of all those of all those things is that you need to get running water or fluid on that wound. We've got to open it up, keep it open so it can drain, and draw that bacteria out. The last step in treating these abscesses at home is then putting something on topically, that one that's going to be antibacterial, um, so it's going to deal with the infection that's present, and then once that infection is cleared up, it's going to actually help then the skin heal on itself and close back in again. So I'm going to show you two different options. One is honey. Of all the different home remedies that I discussed, for a variety of different things, honey really is overlooked, very effective, especially when we're dealing with some of these, these bacterial skin infections, these abscesses, these bite wounds. Honey itself, so it's antibacterial, it's going to deal with most of the common mouth bacteria that are going to cause the infections, dealing with that surface skin bacteria that's present, that is probably causing that infection. Secondly, too, it's also got other components in it that are actually going to help with wound healing and closing that wound up. So it's going to deal with two different things. So after you've flushed it, you've cleaned it, then it's time to put something on topically. So whether it's honey, so I mean, here is a darker honey um, that is from our co-op. It's a honeydew honey, so preferably you want unpasteurized darker honey. That's the honey that has the major more of the healing elements. Um, also, though, just the, the sugar component of the honey itself, 
it draws moisture away from that wound, decreasing bacterial growth and preventing bacterial infection. So if, if that's all you have, fine. Just use over-the-counter table honey. So you're just gonna completely cover that wound. So as I'm doing here with Lewis, so you're just covering that whole entire area with honey. So it's just, and if some, and you want some of that honey to actually get into the puncture wounds themselves. The one other option I want to show you is using aloe or aloe vera gel. I find with aloe itself is also antibacterial and it's also great for helping with wound healing. My personal preference would be to recommend honey though. And then my personal belief is that it's better as far as antibacterial properties go. And it's going to actually help speed that wound up even quicker. There are two topical options after. So in terms of the steps are, once you, so you've clipped it, you've cleaned it, you're going to flush it, you've applied on something topically. You want that wound to stay open for three to five days. So you want to be flushing it preferably twice daily if your dog or your cat will let you. And then putting, so you're going to clean this honey up again tonight, wipe it off, flush that wound again. So you're going to open it up, get rid of some of the bacteria, put the honey on again, doing that for minimum three days, three to five days. And then after, so that, that period of time, that five day period, then we know the bacteria is gone and then we want that wound to start to close up again and have healthy, healthy tissue. Thank you for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. What I want you to do now is click that link, that link in the box above and subscribe to my channel. And then when you go ahead and sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books on videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.